Hi, I'm Jamie. Welcome to Dead Dodge Garage. You'll have to forgive the video quality, the audio quality, the shaky camera, the clutter in the shop, the lighting, and the weather. The fantastic cold start you just heard comes courtesy of my 1948 Dodge Power Wagon. I got this thing running two days ago. It runs surprisingly well. It's currently running on a little gas can and a tiny little electric pump. Eh, somehow that old carburetor works pretty well. But what it does not have is an electrical system of any kind. And that's what I'd like to cover fixing today. Important note, while I am a professional mechanic and I have done this several times, I'm entirely untrained and everything I learned came from YouTube videos and the internet. This truck, just like most vehicles of its time, originally had a six volt positive ground system. Six volt systems crank like crap. These generators charge like crap. And if it's ever dead, you can't get a jump start. You can't get a fresh battery. Just generally everything is terrible. So the first thing to do with a vehicle like this is convert it to 12 volts. The process is gonna be the same or similar for just about any vehicle of this type. Anything that was originally six volt or really anything at all that has no electrical system to speak of. The ingredients are pretty simple and can be scavenged at any auto parts store or off a specialty supply truck, which is where I found some of this stuff. You're gonna need a fuse panel of some type. Usually I like to use two, one for battery power feeds and one for key feeds. But in the case of this truck, I think I'm gonna make do with just the battery panel. This is the most important piece of the puzzle. Any old General Motors self-regulated alternator. I found this one at my local supply chain. It costs $26. That's what you want. Now you can opt for what's called a one-wire alternator, but they tend to cost more, and converting this one for this purpose is very simple. If you're like me and you find points ignition perfectly adequate for an application like this, you're going to need a ballast resistor. I always source one from an early 70s Chrysler product. I plan to drive this thing on the road, so I thought headlights and taillights would probably be a good idea. And I've gone for roughly period looking round taillights that also have the advantage of being extremely cheap. You're also gonna need a bunch of these. I also highly recommend coffee. Now starting a six volt vehicle like this on 12 volts is remarkably simple. Step one, disconnect the generator. Step two, wire ballast resistor in line with the original power wire that fed the coil. It is technically wired backwards, but that doesn't seem to be a problem. Step three, drop in your 12 volt battery. Connect at negative ground. You will find the cables don't fit correctly, but you can usually flip them around and bang on them with a tool until they connect. This will work just fine. You'll see here, I've already changed the battery cables. Nice, shiny, new. In this particular case, I also added the tiny fuel pump and the tiny gas can um, because I choose not to trust whatever horrible sludge is in the gas tank. I already got one truck running from the same location and the fuel that was in the tank would not even burn. It was incredible. But what I have here is a hot wire going to coil positive through the ballast resistor and the positive wire for our little pump. And it's as simple as connecting those to positive. It seems highly inconvenient to have to do that every time you wanna drive and there's no charging system or lighting or anything else. So I guess the next step would be run a wire to this little bugger. Now, because I'm here in my home shop, I'm completely lacking in necessary supplies like self-tapping screws. So for illustrative temporary purposes, I've affixed this with a zip tie. The little elves will definitely come around later and screw this to the firewall. No, no, they won't. Power source for this little fuse panel comes from battery positive. Often I'll use a loop connector, but in this case, there's a tiny little wire here already, and I thought, well, what the heck? Now there really, really should be some type of breaker, around 100 amp maybe, 
or a fusible link or something here to stop this truck from burning to the ground in the case of a catastrophic failure. But I like to live dangerously. And this is a very limited use vehicle, which will spend most of its time sitting right here with the battery unhooked. Another key component of a job like this is the automotive relay. There are several different types. This is a changeover relay. You can tell because there on the diagram, it says 87A and 87, and it shows the little switch there that goes between the two. What this is, is a high amperage switch, which is controlled by a low amperage switch. And that's great because you can use it to turn on loads like your ignition, your fuel pump, and your headlights without burning up the little wires or the ancient switches in your vehicle. Important note, all splice connectors of this type need to be heat shrinked. Now, previously preparing for this project, I stripped the engine compartment of this horrible rotten cloth original wiring. And I really need to do the same to the dash. Just get every bit of it out of here. But, um, there's kind of a smell. I've taken the liberty of mounting a relay and running a couple basic wires. I do want to note that generally you'll need somewhere to run grounds that works well. Usually this will be the metal of the body, but in this case, this relay panel has a handy dandy bus bar built onto it. I've also taken the liberty of grabbing my power probe. This is a fantastic tool. I can put out 12 volt power or ground, which is great for testing devices and circuits. I somehow monkeyed with wiring for well over a decade before buying one of these. They do not sponsor me, but they probably should because I bought four of them. This one is already kind of broken, but anyway. The power probe allows me to demonstrate how this relay works. What we have is a voltage source coming from this random size fuse I've added here into the relay. This is our ground wire. A relay is a load switch. How it works is there's a little coil in there that requires 12 volts and ground to function. And if I set the power probe to power mode and click this, you can hear that switch clicking. Important note, as you're playing with these things, running your new circuits and getting things hooked up, disconnect the battery negative cable or, you know, random wires might fall down and short out on your steps, even though you've done this a hundred times. Now you can use just about any kind of switch you want to trigger a relay. I'm pretty fond of those $11 universal ignition switches you can buy at the parts house in the lawnmower section. But in this case, I thought it would be nice to reuse this original switch with the original key. And lucky for me, it works. Here's a dirty little trick I like. Two smaller wires and a yellow splice together. Works very well. Again, this really needs to be heat shrink. <laughs> One further note, this is pretty much all temporary. The mechanical pump on this actually works, so I will be eliminating this. But in the meantime, I have an ignition and a fuel pump together, powered by this relay. You can see battery feed input on the back side. That's pin 30. Our output here, pin 87. 85 and 86 get power on one and ground on the other. Doesn't matter which is which. And we are rewarded with this. Ah. Now, somewhat conveniently, this loosely assembled pile of scrap metal has a button through the floor to crank the starter. In your case, you may well have to add one additional wire coming from your key switch, a separate switch, or a pair of bare wires dangling under the dash. Now that we have a truck that cranks and starts and pumps fuel and could in theory move, it would be highly convenient to be able to charge the battery so it can continue to do those things. Unfortunately, I won't be able to complete this step today because I'm at home and I'm lacking fabrication tools, any semblance of common sense, and possibly more importantly, a large pulley for my heavy duty belt. However, it is a very straightforward process other than the mounting and aligning. 
As long as you can figure out how to mount the alternator onto your engine and turn it with a belt, all it takes to charge the battery is a wire just like this one. This will connect from the charge post to battery positive. The only other thing required to convince this GM alternator to charge your battery for you is a power source going to terminal number two. This can be achieved in several different ways. It's recommended to run a keyed wire, so you could jumper this off of your ignition. But what I generally do is run a wee little jumper wire from here right to there. It works just fine. I've never had any draw issues doing so. Somewhat inconveniently, I do also have a shop to run today, so I suppose it'll be another time we get around to screwing in these 12 volt headlights. Mounting these little fellas and doing this all up and down the truck. Also, I'm out of coffee. Thanks for watching.